In this video, we're going to discuss electromagnetic radiation. Now, in a previous video, we introduced electromagnetic radiation in the context of a moving charged particle, i.e. an electron in our case. Right? So I want to talk about electro electromagnetic radiation in general and um, understand the basic properties of electromagnetic radiation, since it's going to be very important to our understanding of how we model an electron. So what is electromagnetic radiation? So electromagnetic radiation is the energy that results from oscillating electric and magnetic fields, right? That's where electromagnetic comes from, right? Oscillating electric and magnetic fields that produce energy, that's going to be the electromagnetic radiation. And how it's modeled in classical mechanics is by using waves, right? Since it has this oscillation to its energy, its physics is modeled using a wave. And I have an example of a wave here, right? So um, you can see the wave uh, repeating, right? This uh, thing that we have in the center, we're going to call the rest position, right? So this will be the rest position. So this is essentially if the wave stopped oscillating where the wave would be located in this uh, amplitude space, right? So um, really want to point out a few key features here of the, um, of the wave that we use to model its properties. So um, it's basically this repeating pattern, right? And these peaks that you see in the positive amplitude, these are called the peaks. Okay, so this will be known as a peak. And the um, minimum that you see in the negative amplitude is called the trough. So that's spelled T-R-O-U-G-H, pronounced trough. Right. So you have this oscillating peak and trough, right, that characterize the properties of the wave. And we basically use two main properties to characterize waves. The first is the wavelength. Now, the wavelength is typically measured peak to peak or trough to trough. Right. So I've drawn it up here. This, uh, this is the Greek letter lambda that we use to denote the wavelength. And so it, these, this wavelength is measured from peak to peak or trough to trough, right? So that's the, the wavelength. Right? And we use the Greek letter lambda to denote the wavelength, right? So it's just basically what is the distance between this repeating pattern of the wave, right? The second thing that we use to, uh, to model the properties of a wave is its frequency. Right, so frequency. And we use the Greek letter nu to denote the frequency. And, and for nu, I just use like a V with a little tail on it, right? So that's my nu. So frequency, we use the Greek letter nu. Wavelength, we use the Greek letter lambda. Now, what is the frequency? The frequency is the amount of times that this wave repeats per second, right? So um, let's imagine that this entire distance here is one second, right? So if we take that as one second, we're taking a clip from this oscillating wave that continues forever, but, um, but we're taking this one second clip of the wave, then what you'll notice um, is that there's a certain number of repeats um, of this cycle per second, right? So for this one, we specifically have three repetitions of this cycle per second, right? You got one, two, three, right? Repeats of this per second. So we end up with what we call three cycles per second, right? And that's how we measure the wavelength, right? In the, the amount of cycles over a period of time, in this case, cycles per second. This unit, uh, cycles per second, is usually called hertz, which we use the following uh, notation, hertz with a Z. We use the following notation to denote hertz. It's usually denoted as HZ, right? So this wave, we would say, has a frequency of three hertz, right? So this also can be written as three uh, inverse seconds, or more succinctly, three seconds to the negative one, right? So these are three different ways to denote the exact same unit, right? Three cycles per second or three hertz, 
right? So now it's important to um, to investigate the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency, right? So a question, right? So which one do you think would have a greater, um, a longer wavelength, right? So if we have two wave, let's say one is eight hertz and the other is 16 hertz, right? Which one do you think will have a longer wavelength? Well, let's think about it, right? So if we think about it as in we're taking a one second clip, right? A eight hertz wave would have to repeat eight times in this one second clip, right? Versus a 16 hertz wave would have to repeat 16 times. So its peaks would be much closer together than the eight hertz wave. So that means that the wave that's eight hertz would have a longer wavelength, right? Because its peaks would be further apart versus the one that's 16 hertz would have peaks that are much closer together, right? It's a higher frequency, so the peaks are much closer together, right? So that would give it a shorter wavelength. So what we're really pointing out here is that wavelength and frequency have an inverse relationship, right? So the wavelength is going to be inversely proportional to the frequency. And this is a really important relationship between these two foundational properties of waves, right? So the, the higher your frequency, the lower your wavelength and vice versa, right? Now, in order to turn this into an equation, just like we've done before, you would need a proportionality constant. That proportionality constant is the speed of light, right? So we have lambda would be equal to C, C being the speed of light, over the frequency, right? So this C is the speed of light. Which the speed of light in units, it is 2.998 times 10 to the eight meters per second, right? But this gives us um, an equation to relate wavelength and frequency via the speed of light, right? So lambda times nu, would be equal to the speed of light, right? So they have this proportionality based on the speed of light. Okay, so that's the wave basics. Now, based on what the frequency of the wave would be, these waves have very different properties. So here's the entire electromagnetic spectrum all the way from radio waves up to gamma waves. And what you'll notice in this picture is that it's showing you how the wavelength and frequency change as you go to different uh, types of light, right? Or different types of radiation, I should say. So at the very low end, we have radio waves. These waves have a really long wavelength, right? These are low frequency uh, radiation right here, right? This is very low frequency radiation, right? Radio waves, infrared is a little bit uh, higher frequency. Then you get into the UV invisible region, right? So all of the visible light is here in this region. And you know, that general color grid is, is uh, magnified here in this uh, figure on the bottom, right? Uh, going even higher frequency than that, you have X-rays all the way to gamma rays, which are really, really high frequency radiation, right? But as you know, you see that inverse relationship between uh, wavelength and frequency here, right? As the frequency increases, this wavelength gets really, really short, barely even noticeable, right? So, um, so you can see that here looking at the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so let's look at an example problem. So this example problem is comparing wave properties. It says, consider the following uh, waves representing electromagnetic radiation. So you got one wave, wave A, and another wave, wave B, it asks you which wave has the longer wavelength and to calculate the wavelength of the longer wave, right? So looking at this guy, right, this is all the same length, right? We have 1.6 times 10 to the negative three meters as the length of the entire wave in both cases, right? Um, so that's the, this distance from, from end to end on both waves. And you can see that for wave B, there's many more cycles, right? This is a much higher frequency wave, which means the longer wavelength is gonna to belong to wave A. So for question A, 
the one with the longer wavelength is wave A, right? Because it's a lower frequency wave. So how do we calculate the wavelength? Well, we can calculate the wavelength by taking this total uh, length of the wave from end to end and dividing it by the number of cycles, right? So if we look at this wave, we've got one, two, three, four cycles. So all we need to do is take this 1.6 times 10 to the negative three meters and divide it by the four cycles uh, that we see for the wave from end to end. And that's going to give us a total wavelength of 0 0.0004 meters. So that gives us our total wavelength there for wave A. Now, question B is telling us which wave has the higher frequency. Calculate the frequency of the higher frequency wave, assuming that the waves shown occur over one second, right? So we're assuming again here, just like we did in the first, um, the first example, right? That this total wave shown is one second, right? So now we want to see which one has the higher frequency. Well, I kind of gave that away when discussing part A, right? Wave B is going to have a higher frequency. So we know that wave B is the higher frequency wave, right? And so what we want to do is calculate the, uh, the frequency of this wave. So in order to calculate the frequency, right, let's go back to our equation that we established here, right? This equation establishes the relationship between frequency and wavelength, right? Using the, um, using the speed of light. So uh, we're gonna use that equation here. So first we need to do the same thing we did for part A and actually get a wavelength here. So in order to do that, again, lambda is gonna be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative three meters this guy actually has double the oscillations of wave a or double the cycles so we end up with eight cycles for this guy so its wavelength is going to be 0 0.0002 meters right so that gives us the wavelength and so now if we want to calculate the frequency we need to use that equation that we had on the previous slide where lambda nu is going to be equal to c and we want to calculate the frequency nu so we just do some algebra here, C over lambda. And so this will give us, right, we plug everything in 2.998 times 10 to the eight meters per second, right? Over our wavelength, which is 0 0.0002 meters, right? Your meters are gonna cancel out. So you'll just be left with inverse seconds, which is Hertz, right? So that leaves you with 1.499 times 10 to the 12 hertz, All right? So that gives you the frequency here. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an introduction into wave properties and electromagnetic radiation, right? So this has been a big overview of how uh, electromagnetic radiation is treated uh, classically uh, via wave properties.